we have to get the boat ready for the season and uh, we've got a big season ahead of us. How'd you go? I hate it. <laughs> Apart from the testicular compression that occurs because we're using a climbing harness rather than a bosun's chair. <coughs> oh. <laughs> I just, I don't like it. It is, you, you, I fight, I fight an irrational fear just to cling on. That's the Sunbrella when it's new. That's eight years worth of UV degradation. Pretty good. Yeah, it is pretty good. Today is sewing day again. That is a true tragedy. Yeah, that is my first world COVID problem. Anyone else got a first world COVID problem? <laughs> I'm sure everyone has a first world problem. <laughs> like, um, um. I can't do it, I'm so pissed. And I'm gonna take a trail in the world. I can't love you. Yeah, I'm gonna love you. I'll give you the world of what I've got. The fans and fans, baby. I could be wrapped around your arms instead of being lonely We could be gazing at the stars But now it feels just like I wandered off into a room And closed the door behind me I never gave the key to you Even though I wanted to Today, um, Nick is going up the mast, which I think it's fair to say is his least favourite job on the boat. After the jobs go. After the jobs go, yeah, I was just about to say the, the toilet situation comes in first, actually. Don't get me started on jabs go. But, um, yeah, up the mask, mask, mast. I've got masks on the brain. Up the mast, he needs to go. Yeah, what do you need to do up there? You need to check the rigging and also the, uh, there's a problem with the anemometer, isn't there? Look, the problem with the anonymity is that it fell, that it blew, off, blew away in a storm. Okay, so we don't, we don't have an anonymity. Yeah, because I feel like I went up there once to do something to do with that. Yeah, they, they blow away every now and then. What I usually do, the way that we usually do this, is that um, Nick attaches himself to the main halyard, and because it is, um, it comes back to this, um, no, that, that power winch there. <clears throat> And so, yeah, all I need to do is press a button and it gets sent up the mast. It's a nice little nifty system. You ready? Yeah, just take me just a foot up, yeah. Stop. Bit more. Stop. Therese, I need you to let off about six inches. Stop. Climbing the mast is an absolute reality of boat ownership and while I really despise it, it is something I have to do. This was a relatively simple fix for us, just replacing the cups on the anemometer. A dab of Loctite and she's good to go for another three to five seasons. All right, Therese, go and check the instruments. is working okay you ready however there's a lot to check when you're up there and while I'm swinging 20 meters off the ground I might as well check a few other bits all right stop there a rig check for us is fairly simple there's a visual inspection of all moving parts making sure all your split pins are in place that all the parts of the mast are intact 
Also, we check the rigging. You feel it with your thumb and forefinger just to feel for any bulges where you may have a broken wire. All right, down. It takes about an hour, but is worthwhile and gives us peace of mind when we're sailing offshore. I think the safety's about to get taut. Okay. And while I'm up there, I get to enjoy the view and obviously not look down because I'm scared of heights. Ready? How'd you go? Yeah, you know what? I mean, I, will, I hate it. <laughs> and I, I know that I say this every time I go up the marsh, you are born with two fears, loud noises and tights. Tights? Yeah, there's the two fears that you- No, I said tights. Tights. <laughs> Fear of tights. <laughs> no, look, apart from the testicular compression that occurs because we're using a climbing harness rather than a bosun's chair, um, I just, I don't like it. It is, you, you I fight. <laughs> I fight an irrational fear just to cling on. Yeah. Like some sort of like koala on amphetamine oh. when I'm up that tree, up the, up the mast. Um, and the problem is to do the anemometer, it's at the very, it's the, it's, I think with the exception of the VHF, the VHF aerial, which is about, you know, a foot higher. It's at the very, very, very top of the mast. And it's, it stands probably eight inches clear of the mast top. Mm. Which means that uh, you can only go up so, to a certain height because you're, you're limited by the the, the halyard that brings you up. Mm. So um, you've literally got to get to the point where you've got your legs wrapped around the very top of the mast and you're kind of leaning back on yourself to because you have to do it with two hands. Mm. You can't do it with one hand and you can't hook yourself on anywhere and you just sit there thinking, if my line snaps now, I am literally taking a you know a swallow dive a backward swallow dive onto the deck so yeah that it's, didn't happen no it didn't happen and you know i've got two that's why you have a safety line two 12 mil lines but one thing i am going to do and can someone on the internet recommend something for us i need to get a bit we need for ruby rose too i want a decent bosun's chair because this climbing harness, honestly, my God. It's very uncomfortable. It is just like some sort of Berlin-based S&M club in the <laughs> 1980s where someone puts your knackers in a vice. Ooh. <clears throat> oh. Oh. <laughs> what is the wind strength? Um, well, it's like, at the moment it's just 10 knots, but I can hear, I think there's a lag. Yeah, okay, we're going up to... 16, 16, 17 now. Nice day for a sail. It's like one of those nice days where it's pretty breezy. It's kind of, well, it's blowing about 15 knots in the marina at the moment, probably gusting, you know, low 20s. Bright sunny day, no clouds at all. And I can just imagine so many boats must be out there having so much fun right now. And we're in here. We have to get the boat ready for the season and uh, we've got a big season ahead of us. So, you know, even though these conditions are fantastic and it would be a lot of fun to be out there sailing right now, we, um, we know there's, there's plenty more where that came from. So what exactly are you doing? Spray hoods made of Sunbrella. Sunbrella is almost bomb proof, like UV resistant. It lasts, it very rarely fades. However, all the bits attached to the sunbrella do degrade and one thing that has degraded over time is this which is the webbing straps that hold the spray hood to the coat to the to the to the coach roof so yeah this this isn't as uv resistant as the sunbrella so what i'm going to do today i have another big strip of uv resistant um webbing i need to unpick all this with an unpicker 
I've got three layers because unfortunately it's I've got a zip over one of these, so I need to do some unpicking and then sew this all back. I think it's jobs like this aren't particularly difficult to do if you've got the right equipment. Mm -hmm. Because the umbrella, look at the umbrella. I know. This it's is perfect. It's like yeah. brand new. So the umbrella is pristine, but everything else is uh, just screwed. It's actually really crazy how well that umbrella holds up. It's just insane. Like, how old is that spray hood? So I want to show you some bits. So this, that's the umbrella when it's new. So that's never been exposed to UV. Yeah. Just, just... yeah? And then we'll, this is just verdigris, which will be scrubbed off. Mm. If you compare this to that, that's eight years worth of UV degradation. Pretty good. Yeah, it is pretty good. Fast forward a few hours and Nick is still Arguing with the sound right? I feel like you are. I think it's always operator error. Well, there's something to be said for not drinking and using a sewing machine. Right, so we've had, well, Nick's had a couple of rather large Aperol spritzes. I'm still on my first, my first big one. In fact, I've just about finished. And um, I'm making dinner. So tonight's dinner is um, pasta. It's a little bit like living with a three-year-old who won't eat any vegetables. You have to kind of sneak the vegetables into the pasta sauce. That's what it's like living with Nick. So I... I <laughs> I, mean, I love it, vegetables. I just they have to be cooked in a certain way. Well, when I'm cooking, they cooked my way, and that's just the way that it is. So that's what we've got going on. Are you going to be ready for dinner in about three minutes? Okay. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see I hope you're hungry <laughs> This is like your entire daily calorific requirement Yes mm -hmm. I've never seen such a massive plate of pasta before. Very good, mate. Is that okay? Perfectly cooked. Yay. day two of Nick swearing at the sewing machine. Today is sewing day again. So I've uh, changed the zip on the sail bag. I wasn't happy with that. I've done the repairs to the spray hood. I'm happy with those. The last thing to do is to just put a couple of stitches in our ensign. And when I say a couple of stitches, it does need repair. And the reason I don't want to change the ensign is that it is kind of like, it's a, uh, like a map of our journey like it's been here since day one and it is not in a good condition so i want to keep it as this is our last season with this boat i just want to keep her ticking along and then what we tend to do as i did with my old boat is we take the ensign and either frame it or do something with it like i turned the last one into into a couple of pillows i did they got yeah, the they're in the are they the ones in the forehead yeah, yeah. they've got the cushions what's your plan with the ensign are you just going to shorten it I put a couple of turns in this frayed edge. Mm. So has that ensign been with us since yeah. the very beginning? That's crazy. Yeah, I think all the places this has been raised and lowered. I know. Hey, all the places we've raised and lowered this beautiful thing. I'm 
Look at that forecast. Sunshine every single day. So we are here in La Rochelle and for now, well, as soon as we get out of the marina, we'll be going probably to Ile de Ray, which is just here. Maybe Ile de Laurent, which is here. And then as soon as we start actually kind of making any progress, we'll be aiming towards probably Sabdelon, which is there. How far away is Sabdelon? It's only 30 miles, I think. Yeah. Not far. Not far. If only we could leave over the next few days, we'd be getting like an insane beam reach all the way up to Sabdelon. So it's Monday. Yes, it's Monday. And towards the end of the week, the French prime minister or president or someone who's making all the announcement these days they actually have a prime minister and a president in france <laughs> anyway someone is making an announcement towards the end of the week apparently on what the next phase is of um kind of the easing of restrictions deconfinement they call it and it's kind of widely speculated that that will include opening up restaurants and bars and you know more people can get together and that kind of thing but what we are hoping for is that we are allowed to travel uh, further distances so right now uh, everyone in France is allowed to travel 100 kilometers away from their main residence but no further so we have interpreted that to mean and we've kind of had confirmation from the marina the staff at the marina that we can sail within 100 kilometers of here and what's that in my in order in miles is that 59 66 65 we haven't i don't know i'll work it out and i'll put it on the screen i don't know how how many miles away that is so yeah we could we could sail you know to the nearby islands the islands just out here they're only a few miles away and they're beautiful and we're definitely going to do that but we would like to have some confidence when we leave the marina that we will be able to continue um going north because what we don't want is to leave la rochelle marina and then have to turn around and come back to say that we're excited to set off and get underway and go sailing again and be at anchor and go explore it's an understatement we're desperate cheers my love you know you said sin on the wire babe the problem well one of the problems with COVID-19. <laughs> One of the many. <laughs> Apart from the death, the, the complete destruction of the economy, <laughs> families being torn apart, people being unable to travel, is the amount of hand sanitizer that I've had to use and how it destroys my fingernails. And I can't grow my fingernails because of that, because they keep cracking. So- That is a true tragedy. Yeah, that is my first world COVID problem. Anyone else got a first world COVID problem? <laughs> I'm sure everyone has a first <laughs> um, um. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a pain in the ass actually, but yes, as I said, compared to death, destruction, all that other shit. Um, could be worse. Could be worse, my love. I wish there was something you could do or say to try to make me change my mind stay. We never did too much talking anyway Don't think twice, it's alright So long, honey, baby When I'm bound, I can't tell Too good is too good to work, So I just say fairly well Down the road. What the hell's next? <laughs> <laughs> Once loved a woman, a child, I am told. I give her my heart and she wanted my soul. Don't think twice, it's alright. Fell off the boat for the first time ever. Just fell off. Cheers, my love. 
they are scrapping the rule where you have to stay within 100 kilometers of your primary residence. So we are free to cruise around uh, wherever we want to go along the French coast and that is such a relief to us. So that means that hopefully we can get going, get back to cruising. I know that we both want that very, very much. If you haven't already done so, please consider joining us on Patreon. In addition to early access to all our videos, there's a Patreon Facebook group, chat with us on our WhatsApp group, get Patreon only videos and live streams, and we also have a whole lot of Ruby Rose 2 news, crewing, and meetup opportunities. 